individualism. Individualism is a topic which has interested me uh, implicitly through my life and explicitly through my writing, particularly from the time in 1977 when I wrote my book called The Origins of English Individualism. And so I thought about it a good deal. And to me it means the idea that if you look at a society and what is the basic element in that society, in most parts of the world, in peasant societies, in India, China and so on, the basic unit from which the society is built up is the group, the family, or the village, or the community. In England, and I was amazed to find this went back and back and back and back, to the 12th, 13th century in that book and then earlier in later books. In England, the main uh, building block is just the single individual. Each individual, and I had a picture as on the cover of my book of Robinson Crusoe marooned on his desert island alone for some time before Good Friday turned up. and we are alone. Each individual in England is a full uh, entity, that is to say he or she, once adult, uh, is a, an autonomous political unit, voting for who they like, an autonomous economic unit, earning and keeping their money and disposing of it at death as they like, an autonomous religious unit deciding who or what they want to worship in what way, and an autonomous political social unit. Uh, social because we decide who we want to get married, we decide on our career, we decide who our friends are, we decide what our hobbies are and our interests are. So I have a picture of a billiard ball table with a whole lot of billiard balls whizzing around and this makes for a highly individualistic kind of organization. We are of course united by clubs and associations and hobbies and games and many other things to balance the extreme individualism, but it is the root and basis of our system. We are alone with our God, we are alone in the economy, we are alone as political actors and we are alone as social beings. The one great exception to this, of course, is through partnerships, close partnerships, the, the epitome of this being marriage or a partnership of that kind, where somehow the boundaries between individuals are often quite considerably broken down. So as the Bible um, and the marriage service and so on put it, you become one blood, one soul, one flesh. So um, two autonomous individuals fuse again into each other as I found my fusing, myself fusing over 50 years of marriage uh, to my wife Sarah. So I look to her constantly if she disappears uh, when I'm working and I can't find her, you know, within five minutes I begin to get worried. I'm constantly reflecting my ideas and sentiments of her. We do everything together. Well, this is a, an extreme case of bonding, as some of our friends have pointed out. But many people are searching through their lives for the other one with whom they can fuse, because individualism is closely associated, of course, with loneliness. Um, loneliness, as I observed it in the Himalayan village where we worked in Tibet, um, Japan and China, is not, on the whole, one of the central problems because you are always a member of some group. You always have family, parents, uh, neighbours and so on. Whereas in England, the lonely crowd as David Reisman described in the title of his book, The Lonely Crowd, a crowd of people, each of them 
separated and lonely is a strong feature of uh, what I call the Anglosphere. And um, this is why one of the central features that Tocqueville described as a Frenchman when he went to America was the individualism. Um, it was something he admired because it gives you freedom. You can act freely as an individual. You're not bound and tied by pressures of community and family. Um, and it leads to creativity and energy. So he thought it led to many good things, but he dis uh, distinguished it from egotism, which was carrying this so far that the only person you thought about was yourself and you were ruthlessly pursued your own um, desires against everyone else. And that, of course, he disapproved of. So a certain degree of individualism and freedom is something I've rejoiced in and benefited from throughout my life. But I can also see the costs of individualism and I can see that it is a strange phenomenon, how it emerged, how it has been sustained, whether it will survive into the future as we are linked to each other and absorbed and changed by new technologies and political shifts, who knows. But certainly throughout my life I have been a strong individualist and uh, gained from that, but also possibly one day, certainly if my partner leaves me, I will be alone in the way that is very characteristic of our society.